Hi everybody and welcome to this new video. If you follow my work, my blog, my Medium account or my YouTube channel, you could notice that I usually realize integrations between Unity 3D and AWS. And I never dive into details about how the connection between the Unity client and the Amazon services is made in order to focus on the main topic of the video. However, it's not so straightforward and it deserves a whole video. There are many ways to access AWS resources from Unity. And in this video, I will show you three of them. The first one using an AIM user, the second one using a Cognito guest user, and the third one using a Cognito authenticated user. In this video, I will use the AWS SDK for .NET. You can find in the description of this video how to install it in your Unity project. Let's start with the first way, using an IAM user. Suppose that you want to allow specific users to upload files to one of your S3 buckets. However, you want to keep it simple without implementing a sign-up or login flow. You just want to give a programmatic access to this user. In this case, using an IAM user is a perfect fit. So you have your S3 bucket. The only thing you have to do is creating an IAM user and attach a policy to it. This policy will allow the user to upload file in this specific S3 bucket. In Unity, you just need the access key and the secret access key of the user to build your S3 client, and that's it. You can upload your files. In the S3 console, I have created a new bucket called AWS Resources Bucket. As you can see, this is an empty bucket and a private bucket. Nobody has access to it. Let's go now to the IAM console. Okay, and we create a new user. We will give a cool name to the user, upload file user, and next. In the permission section, we will add a new policy. I have created a new policy named AWS Resources Policy. This policy allow the user to upload or to write new file in this specific bucket. So we select it and next, create. Okay, the user has been created, we click on it. Okay, now we need to create new, a new access key related to this user. So we go to the security credential section and we click on create access key. We will give a common line interface uh, access to this user. I understand and next. No tag. At this point, be careful because you will be given an access key and a secret access key but the secret access key is shown just one time at this moment. So copy it because we will need it later. And we click on done. Okay, my user has been created. I have security credential and my policy is attached to it. Let's go now to Unity. For this video, I have created a very simple project in Unity with three scripts, one per example we are going to see. And I uh, attached those files to an empty Unity object. Uh, also, I, I'm using here the AWS SDK files and a plugin named Native Gallery to pick uh, image files in the device. So please check the description of this video because I will give you all the links to download those files and plugins. Okay, let's now check the code. This is the code, a very simple code. First of all, we pick 
a new object in the device, a new file in the device, and we upload it to AWS. So first of all, please enter here the name of the bucket you have created, in my case, AWS resources bucket. Then I will give a cool name to the image uh, we are going to upload, upload with IAM user. And then we need here to indicate the secret key, the access key and the secret key we have created for the IAM user. Okay, that's it. I passed the value and I save the file. Let's go now to Unity and we run the application. Then we pick a file, okay, images, whatever, a teddy bear, okay. And we have here an uploaded true value. So let's go to the S3 console. And that's it, we have successfully uploaded a new file thanks to an IAM user and uh, a policy attached to it. Let's now see the second way to access AWS resources using a Cognito guest user. You may remember my last video where I built a real-time multiplayer game with Unity 3D and Amazon GameLift. The Unity client calls a Lambda function to start playing. And we want that everybody who has downloaded the game can play without being logged in. So in this example, we basically give access to AWS resources, in this case, Lambda, to unauthenticated users. And the best way to do it is by using guest users of a Unity identity pool. So we will create a very simple Lambda function and a Cognito identity pool, and we will attach a guest policy to it. This policy will give the user the necessary permission to invoke the Lambda function. Then in Unity, we will build a AWS credential thanks to the identity pool ID. You can find it in the Cognito console. And then we can build the Lambda client thanks to the AWS credential. And that's it. We can invoke the Lambda function from Unity. So let's go to the Lambda console. In the Lambda console, I have created a very basic function called AWS resources function. I did it in Python, but it's up to you to use your favorite programming language. So now let's go to the Cognito console. In the Cognito console, we create a new identity pool and we give a guest access to this pool. So next, here we are going to create a new role for this pool. So We'll give a cool name, a rest resource cognito guest role. And next, enter a name, a rest resource cognito identity pool. And next, we review, we are okay, and we create it. Okay, that's it. So now please click on it. We go to user access and we click on the guest role we have created. Okay, so here we need to attach a policy to allow the user to invoke the Lambda function. So add permission, attach policy. And here I already have created the policy. AWS resources guest policy. So I add this policy and that's it. The policy has been attached to the role. As you can see, the policy gives the user the necessary permission to invoke the Lambda function, the basic Lambda function we have created. So now let's go to Unity. 
This is the code of the second example. Here we have to change two things. First of all, the identity pool. We need to build AWS credential with the identity pool ID. So let's go to the Cognito console and here we can copy the Cognito identity pool ID and we paste it here in the credential. Then we have the credential with the same region be careful of that. And we can here build the, the Lambda client. And when we invoke the request, we need here to specify the name of the function we have created. So AWS resources function. And that's it. Let's go to Unity. We activate the second script and we run the application. And you can see here invoking Lambda function 200 hello from Lambda. So the Lambda function has been successfully called and it's working fine. So let's now see the third example. Uh, we are going to access AWS resources, but this time with an authenticated user. For this example, we will keep the ID of a multiplayer game. So imagine you want to give your user, your player, the possibility of uploading a profile picture, but this time you require the user to log in. Uh, this case is a bit more complex because your game will handle both guest user and authenticated user. Hopefully you can achieve it given your identity pool, uh, an authenticated user and attach a policy to it. Then you need to create a user pool and relate the user pool with the identity pool. In Unity this is also a bit more complex because you have first to log in to the user pool you have created. You will be return a token ID. Then we can build the address credential as in the previous ex example with the identity pool ID. And then very important, this is a very important step because this is when you indicate uh, that you are in fact uh, an authenticated user. So you have here to add the logging to the credential. The logging data are the token ID and the provider name. We will see in a bit what is the provider name. Then you can, be, you can, you can build the S3 client and at least finally you can upload the files in the S3 bucket. So now let's go to the Cognito console. In the Cognito console, we create a new user pool. For this example, for this video, I already have created a user pool and a user. If you want to know how to do it, uh, how to create a sign up flow for uh, user cognito user pool, I recommend you to watch a previous video of mine where I explain everything. So let's go now to the identity pool we have created in the previous example. We click on it. Okay, and we click on user access. Okay, what we are going to do now is add an authenticated access for this pool. So click on add, ID, add identity provider. And as you can see, there is a lot of ways, there is a lot of identity providers available. Click on Amazon Cognito user pool. And here we enter the user pool we have created before. Okay. And we click on save changes. Okay. Now click on edit wall. And we are going to create a new role for the authenticated role. So we create a new 
IAM role with a cool name, save changes. Perfect. We click on the wall and here we are going to add a new permission, a new policy. Now we are going to select the same policy as in the first example. So AWS resource policy that allows the user to write in our bucket. So, okay, we select the policy, add permission. And that's it. The role is ready. Uh, we are done with the cloud part. Now let's go to Unity. This is the code. So first of all, we are going to authenticate. We are going to log in to the user pool we have created. And then we receive a token ID. We store the token ID in the local variable. We build the AWS credential with a Cognito Identity Pool and we add the login data. The login data is first of all the token ID and then the provider name. So the provider name is something interesting because it's the combination, the concatenation between Cognito-IDP, the region of your identity uh, pool, uh, your identity pool, and then Amazon AWS.com slash and the Cognito user pool ID. So finally, we can build the S3 client with those credentials and upload the file to uh, the S3 bucket we have created. So let's go to Unity. And let's try this code. In Unity, we select a third script related to this example, and we don't forget to change uh, the action of the button. And okay, we are ready to test. So we run the application. Okay, we can see that the user has been successfully logged in. We pick a new file. I will pick the same file and previously, there is no problem with it. The same teddy bear and open. Okay, so the file has been successfully uploaded. So now let's go to the S3 console. We update the bucket and that's it. We have successfully uploaded an image with a now authenticated user. That's it for this video. Uh, as you could see, it's not so simple uh, to establish a connection between AWS services and Unity 3D. And I really, really hope that this video could help you and you could use it for your games or your application. Don't forget to visit my Medium page, my YouTube channel, my websites, and see you in the next video.